Hi guys! So I thought I'd start the video with a slightly new look. Um, at this point I would really like to thank my colleagues um, at Sue Rider for sending me this gorgeous Starlight Height package. Um, this is what is contained within the goodie bag I believe. When you sign up for the Starlight Hike you get a wonderful Starlight Hike t-shirt, gorgeous blue wig and dealer boppers that glow in the dark and change colour. So just as a reminder to all of you who have yet to sign up for the Starlight Hike, make sure you do because as you can see it's definitely worth it. It's a great night out, lots of entertainment, food, drink, good atmosphere, good people, very well organised I should say. Um, so yeah, definitely make a night of it. Be there or be square. I hope that was okay Hayley. Cheers. So I will remove um, the attire just for the sake of this video. I need to put my serious face on. Um, and I'm just going to talk about um, thing. oh that is flashing and it's a little bit irritating. There we go. Um, things that are helpful and mainly unhelpful to say when you think somebody has an eating disorder but they haven't actually come out and said it themselves yet. When I was really ill five years ago, and I'll keep mentioning that, but that is basically when my eating disorder started. Certain things were said to me at certain times which were just really frustrating and it made you want to punch the person and just sort of like scream at them basically. Things like, oh well why don't you just eat? Come on! At that point, you kind of just want to scream in their face, I'm starving, hungry, I would love to eat, I would love nothing more than to shove my face into this chocolate cake, but I can't do it! And it's basically, the reason why is because that voice in your head is saying, don't you dare eat anything, and if you do, it just wouldn't be worth dealing with the total mental anguish that you go through for the next day, 24 hours, week, I don't know. But basically, all you know is that it's not worth putting that food in your mouth to go through that trauma, so you just don't do it, essentially. As much as you, as you are actually dying, pardon the pun, because you probably are dying to eat, you can't, and it's tormenting. It's seeing other people eat makes you want to cry. It's, I can't explain it. I, I would never wish this illness upon my worst enemy. I don't have an enemy. If I did, I wouldn't ever wish this upon them. It's, it's, <laughs> it's horrific. It is horrific. Um, anything along the lines of, oh, you'll feel better for eating. Why don't you try this? You might really like it. Again, all links packed to the whole thing. Obviously, I will feel better if I eat. I know this. I'm not stupid. But I can't. And I feel fun. I feel a bit silly for saying, like, but I can't. Because I am now. I am eating. Um, because I'm obviously slowly working around it. And here you don't have a choice. If you don't eat, you you know, you get, sort of, you don't get punished, but you, you know, that's why you're here, to get better, you, you know, the people that are in this building have accepted the fact that they do need help, they have an eating disorder, and they want to try and get better. Um, when you do actually eat, um, don't stare at the person, because I've been in situations before when people have obviously noticed that my weight has dropped a lot, um, but I have eaten in front of people and I've been extremely self-conscious, very awkward and people have stared and I get it, you know, because you're, you're kind of intrigued and you're just kind of worried and, you know, but it's like you're self-conscious enough that you're, you're having to eat in front of people, you know, and you're going to be very hyper aware or hyper sensitive to things that are going on around you. So it's pretty obvious when you're staring. I know you're staring. Stop staring. Let me get on with my food. Let me enjoy it. Keep it as natural as possible. Just create a normal environment. Don't make a big deal out of the whole, oh my God, she's eating thing, you know. Crack on, basically. Don't comment on body shapes of other people, even if it's just somebody walking by or somebody in a magazine like, oh gosh, she's curvier than I thought she was, or oh wow, um, her legs are bigger, um, her legs are big, or, um, you know, oh, isn't her tummy wobbly, you know, just anything like that, because that's your judgment, that's fine, but saying that to somebody with an eating disorder, all they're going to do instantly is think, oh my god, they've said something negative about that person's body, and whether that person is healthy or normal weight, which they probably are, it's going to instill that fear in you even more to not want to put weight on, um, because you, you keep hearing negative comments. So that really isn't helpful, so just be very mindful of what you're saying about other people, whether, you know, whether it's good or bad, to be honest. 
because the whole eating disorder thing is about comparing yourself to others. So just remove that element altogether. Saying things like, um, you don't look like somebody with an eating disorder. Now this is more geared towards people who are possibly bulimic. Um, because believe it or not, people with bulimia are either normal weight or slightly overweight. I'm not entirely sure as to the science as to why. I think it's because when you have bulimia, you throw up after food. But you might not throw up after every meal or you might not throw up all of it. And there's a big hormonal imbalance with people with bulimia, even sort of larger than people with anorexia, I'd say. And it affects your thyroid and things like that. So there's different things that play into that. So just because somebody doesn't look like they have an eating disorder doesn't necessarily mean they don't have one. So bear that in mind as well. Um, as for things that are, are helpful to say, for me personally, I can't think of anything, you know, everything is helpful if it's said in a positive way. Like, oh, you know, keep going, you're doing really well. Just anything with an encouraging element to it. Maybe not mentioning at the minute anything about body shape or you can say obviously, oh, you're looking really well because I know I'm looking better than I have been doing. I know that, that's fine. But making particular reference to a certain body part, puff my boobs, I know my boobs have got bigger, that's fine. <laughs> but, you know, um, just for now anyway, just kind of, you know, saying, oh, you look well, that's really cool. I like hearing that. Um, but not being too specific about it yet, you know, yet. Because um, I'll get there. Um so yeah, it's um, what you've got to bear in mind is kind of like, this is things that you need to be mindful of if you think somebody has an eating disorder. They probably haven't come out and said it yet. They will know it, but they haven't come out and said it yet. The people in this building have all accepted that they have an eating disorder, they want to get better, and you know they're prepared to help themselves. Those are the key three things. You know, you've got to accept it and you've got to, to work at it, basically. So... You know, the unhelpful things like, why don't you just eat? They don't apply to me, really, because I am eating. I'm in this unit. I, you know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to try and get better. So it's just for people that, you know, you suspect may have an eating disorder, but aren't quite sure what to say. So I hope that gives you some sort of frame of reference. Obviously, it's down to the individual person, your relationship with them, and how you think they'll react. Some people maybe dying to tell you that they have a problem but don't want to bring it up because they're scared or they're embarrassed or ashamed so maybe picking an appropriate moment and just sort of asking them you know you know we've noticed you, your weight's dropped are you struggling saying it like that maybe not actually saying do you have an eating disorder because that's scary just saying are you struggling with anything and just taking the time you know maybe leaving a, a bit of a pregnant pause because of, you know have you ever noticed that when there's a big silence, somebody will automatically say something just to naturally try and feel that silence because it's that awkward? Try that tact because I know it's worked with me in the past. Things have come out and have been said, which I probably wasn't intending to share, but I have, and I felt so much better for it afterwards. So, yeah, I hope that's been helpful. Um, <clears throat> it might give you an insight anyway, you know, from somebody that has had and still has an eating disorder. It'd be very interesting for me to do a video once I'm recovered, actually, and watching a few of these videos back and sort of, you know, just comparing myself to how I am now, to how I will be, to how I was five years ago. It's very bizarre. Um, so, yeah, this video was brought to you by the Sue Rider Starlight Hike. Remember, sign up soon, or now, in fact, because I think entry may have, it might have even closed already. I don't know. Go and have a look now. www.suerider.org forward slash starlight hike maybe google it you you'll get there um so yeah everybody have um have a really good um friday have a really good weekend might not do so many videos over the weekend depending on what happens and who's here it's getting really um it gets a bit boring on the ward at weekends but i'll i'll see how i go all right guys see you later bye